So Matt, we always tell our clients that customize your resume when applying to a job, even if it's kind of similar job, but change it, maybe use some of the keywords or re rearrange it. So in your experience, what are some of the tips you can give for job seekers in terms of customizing resumes so that they can pass the applicant tracking system? Excellent. Yeah. And I think that's one of the unknowns for a lot of job hunters too, is the ATS. It scares them. It's like a bad word. Yeah. Um, it really, it's not supposed to be. It used to be when I was a recruiter in the 2000s, this thing was just a house to store resumes and then pull those resumes out later using the keywords. Yeah. Um, but now they are getting more sophisticated. There are gatekeepers out there. Uh, I would say the gatekeepers that are AI, uh, the ATS. So um, one, and I know everyone tells you this, but the formatting matters, get something linear and easily parsed, meaning take your resume now in Word, hit, hit edit, select all, copy and paste it into a text document. If it looks jumbled up or a mess, you're in bad, you, you, you know, you're, you're, in, you're in bad luck right now with that resume format. So you need something that you can copy paste linear throughout any medium, including online. So that's first. Mm -hmm. And that means less, you know, graphics, pictures, charts, all For that sure. kind of stuff. If you're a graphic designer, have an infographic, but send it in as an addendum to your application using a professional format, at least. Yeah. So then they could see a little example with obviously coupled with a professional format. So yeah. let's get that one out of the way, right? The formatting, mm -hmm. um, less is more, trust me. They want to know yeah. what you can do in terms of value, not how cool this border looks. Yeah. Um, the next thing though, when it comes to the, to the customizing, mm -hmm. yes, I preach that as well. My thought is, so and I believe this is kind of how I weave my summaries. This is kind of the way I, I build my summaries. It's not a career snapshot anymore. Now it's your value offering. Why are you their pain reliever? Why are you Tylenol to their pain because of this opening? And how are you going to make their life easier and jump to it quick, right? So you got to summarize this stuff in this resume as quick as you possibly can. There's mm. no attention spans anymore. And so we need to get your, not your career journey. They can figure that out through your titles and stuff. We need to figure out what the heck did you do that made the bottom line improve, cut costs, streamline accomplishments, accomplishments. Yeah, accomplishments. So, and think operationally. The more the more you can ingrain it KPIs and, and things that show actual outcomes. Yeah. Now, moreover, though, the ideal candidate, like you said earlier, customizing it, go to job description, reverse engineer some of this stuff into your resume, mm -hmm. like the keywords, right? The skills, like you said, yeah. that's a given. But then moreover, look at the tasks. They got five things on there that are the major things. Put those five things in your resume under wherever you had actually done them, but don't just copy paste, make it your own. Yeah. Put a little touch to it that shows, here's Mayhar's way that he can handle the full project management life cycle. And in fact, here was a neat little outcome that he actually specifically did do it. And, mm -hmm. and now you can springboard off of that yeah. during an interview. So I always tell people the resume is the meal you're giving to the hiring manager and the interviews when you talk about the ingredients. So mm -hmm. you don't need this whole big story of each project, yeah. just quick, concise, mm -hmm. then the interview, elaborate. And hopefully those lines of dialogue directly relate to that job because that's going to make it resonate better. And what about cover letters? If it's optional, do you recommend job seekers still to put cover letters so that kind of they're selling themselves an opportunity or, or, what's, or what are your thoughts? Yeah. So cover letters, it's interesting. When I recruited, never read any of them, but I know people that did. And I had a, a couple wonky hiring managers in my time that wanted to see cover letters coupled mm -hmm. with the resume. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's your best interest to play the game, quote unquote, yeah. get a cover letter, send it in. If you don't want to beat yourself up and customizing this thing for every role, fine. Just drop the date, make it a general hiring manager, you know, dear hiring manager. Don't put any sort of fill in stuff. Just make it your general title. If you're an HR recruiter, you might be applying for a talent acquisition specialist or a recruiting technical, yeah. or all these types. It doesn't matter. Just, just write recruiter. They'll get the idea. And then um, make sure that you have a few bullets and, and, and skills that, again, will resonate with the readers just so you kind of uh, are done with that and you don't have to worry about it. And then just just uh, when you're submitting your application, yeah. click add uh, addendum, put the cover letter in, you're on your way. The 50% of the audience that do read them, you don't want to lose out because you chose not to do a cover letter. Yeah. Wow. And they happen to be that audience member of that particular role. Those are great tips, Matt. Thank you very much. So again, for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips, leave them below and tune in next time for another great question with Matt.